Okay, so if you have a Ryzen 9 7950X or any of the new Ryzen 7000 chips for that matter, 7900X, 7700X, they all work the same. There is a way to actually save power, improve the performance, or maybe both at the same time while reducing your temperature. So today in this guide, we will go over every way in which you can do it. There are many different ways on the internet. I will discuss all of them and give you a specific recommendation for each of the way. We will use the PBO, okay, Precision Boost Overdrive, uh, and we will also use a manual uh, CPU core clock and manual voltage offset. And we will describe why you should go with one uh, instead of the other, depending on the use case scenarios. Let's get straight into it. This system right there, it has an X670E ASRock Pro RS and a Ryzen 9 7950X. I'm using a 240mm all-in-one cooler from iTech. And this PC does actually have a full build on my channel in case you're interested. Let's go. For this tutorial, we will use the BIOS, but you can also do the exact same thing using Ryzen Master in Windows if you want. Just download Ryzen Master and use the same settings. Now, we are using an ASRock BIOS, so the names might be a little different if you're using an ASUS BIOS or other BIOSes, uh, but the settings will be the same, be it ASUS, Gigabyte, whatever it is, it will be the same settings, okay? So, what you want to do is get into the BIOS, go into the advanced mode, and then depending on your BIOS, you will have an overclocking section. In this case, it's called OC Tweaker, in ASUS, it's called AI Tweaker. We get in there, and now we have to decide what we want to do, okay? So, there are two ways to go about it. We either do the PBO, okay, Precision Boost Overdrive Curve, um, and what that does is it uses an, an algorithm to basically overclock your CPU uh, in each point, and it does it automatically, depending on what voltage offset you give it to him, and depending on what temperature limit you set to it, okay? That is one way we will do it first, then the other settings is just the static uh, CPU ratio with static voltage. Now, why should you use one and why should you use the other? Well, if you are doing strictly productivity, okay, or if the CPU is extremely overkill for your games, then I do recommend the static one, okay? Because that is gonna save more power. But the first one that we're gonna see, which I'm starting right now, will give you better performance and lower power and lower temperature, okay? So let's say you wanna do the PBO method, okay? In the ASRock BIOS, if you go on performance preset, they give you basically all those options to choose from. In different BIOSes, you might have to do this manually but we will go over what every one of these means. So as you can see, it says TJ Max, and then it gives you a, a value. It can be 85 degrees, 75 degrees, it can be also different. This is the maximum temperature that your CPU will aim for while trying to boost, okay? So in this case, if we select 85, the CPU will boost to a maximum of 85 degrees. Now, what we wanna do is combine this with a curve optimizer offset. This is just a voltage offset, a dynamic voltage offset, which will reduce your power and temperature, okay? Now, the lower you go with the voltage, the better, but not every CPU can take minus 40. And in my experience, most CPU can take minus 15 easily, but minus 20 usually is fine. So minus 20 is what I do recommend. Now with this, we have to then decide what temperature we want our CPU to go at. Now, the higher the temperature, the higher the performance. So this is a choice that you have to make, but I will give you my recommendation. Personally, I like a 75 degrees TJ Maxx and a minus 20 millivolt offset. So in my motherboard, I just hit them there and it does it all for me. But if your motherboard does not have um, this performance preset just on top, you have to do it manually. So how do you do it manually? You go into the CPU configuration and then scrolling down, you will find something called AMD overclocking or like precision boost overdrive, something like this. And then you have to enable it. And then you will have to select, to select an offset, as you can see. And so you can just basically give it minus 20 or minus 30. Um, for example, here, you select a negative sign and then you give it minus 20. This will be the same as selecting at the start of the BIOS, the preset, okay? This is how to do it manually. You just go in here, 
enable curve optimizer all cores, negative offset, 20. And you can also try 30. Try this, try 30, try 40. See if it works for you. But if you wanna just copy it and have it working, put 20, trust me. So this is something. Then you also wanna, of course, put basically a throttle limit, which is the other thing that we selected. So in there, in this case, we would put 75. So this is how to do it. If your motherboard does not have the preset, okay? You just go in here, set the platform thermal limit throttle, 75 degrees, go on curve optimizer, set it to minus 20 and you're done. Copy these settings, you will be good for the dynamic one. If you want a bit more performance, you can go here, set 85. This will give you 10 degrees more headroom, a bit more performance, but a bit more power consumption as well. You have to choose for yourself, but those are the settings you can play around with. Now, this is it for the dynamic uh, settings. Of course, be sure to enable your XMP for your RAM. Um, and you can also tune the Infinity Fabric, what I will do a dedicated tutorial to RAM. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but that's, that's less important, guys. Just enable XMP, you, you will be fine. Uh, but anyways, if instead you want to go with the static route, this is what I do recommend, okay? So for the static routes, basically you set everything to auto, okay? We start fresh. You don't have to do none of the previous things. You enable your XMP on your RAM, and then on CPU overclocking, you select customize, depending on the BIOS, it might be manual. And then you wanna input these settings, okay? Under core voltage, here it's called core VID, but it could be called by core voltage depending on the motherboard. You wanna input 1.2 volt, okay? If you are doing this in Ryzen Master, you wanna put 1.2 volt in the voltage in Ryzen Master. And then when you go on the frequency, in this case, we have it split in two by CCD, you wanna put 4,800 megahertz. So 4.8 gigahertz, this is, this is the frequency your CPU will run at. If you're feeling lucky, you can try 4,900. And if it doesn't work and you're feeling unlucky, you can try 4700, okay? This is the frequency your CPU will run at. This is the voltage it will run at. So the lower the voltage, uh, basically, the less temperature and the less the power consumption you're gonna have. The original one uh, with the PBO will drop 20 to 30 watts. But this one will drop 80 watts from your CPU. So it's much more power saving. Uh, and under AVX instruction, this thing actually performs a bit better. Uh, but you will lose a little bit in games. So if you're playing, say, 360 hertz with a 4090, you might want to go with PBO, but I personally think this is the best one uh, that I recommend. Uh, also, if you've seen a tutorial from Techia City, uh, he recommends a static offset too. I've seen his tutorial too. It's a good one in case you want to work with this static offset, and uh, he also shows in depth all the results. I do recommend it. But yes, this is basically it for uh, this Ryzen 9 7950X overclocking tutorial. Uh, do let me know which one you chose and if you have any kind of help please drop a comment i read all of them and i will try to help you out and i have many more tutorials on the channel how to overclock for example this 4070 ti right there or other cpus so if you like this one please drop a like and a sub and stay around for more videos uh, also build videos and other tech content bye